What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the first beta of iOS 15.2 to registered developers just two days after the release of iOS 15.1 and just one day after the release of the new AirPods 3 and the new MacBook Pros. Now in addition to this release, we also got iPadOS 15.2 beta 1 and watchOS 8.3 beta 1, so no tvOS mac os or homepod os updates just yet so of course in this video we're going to be talking all about ios and ipad os 15.2 and what's new in the software along with when to expect the final release so starting off with the size of this update you can see here it came in at 5.42 gigabytes on my iphone 13 pro max that size will be large if you're coming from ios 15.1 the final release because anytime you go from a final release like a public release to a beta or vice versa it is going to be a very large size so do expect it to take a little while to download and install but if you go ahead and check out the build number for 15.2 beta 1 right here 15.2 we can see here the build number is 19C5026I. So we do have an I at the end of the build number, which does indicate we should have quite a few betas before the final release as expected. And if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that is 1.29.01. And that is quite a big jump from iOS 15.1. So if you're having any issues related to the modem, those could very well be solved with 15.2 and that big modem firmware jump. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.2? And the first thing is actually a feature we've been waiting quite a while for, and that is the new app privacy report. So if we go into our settings and then go down to privacy, then all the way down to the bottom, we will see app privacy report. So before on iOS 15.1, this was actually known as record app activity. So if we go into our settings here on 15.1 on the left and go to privacy then down to the bottom, you can see it used to say record app activity, but now it is app privacy report. So it has been renamed, but not only that, when we go into it, it actually now shows the UI. So before on iOS 15 and 15.1, you could not actually see a UI in here. You would basically just have to download your privacy report. But now it shows us the entire UI here, and you can see up top, it tells you about this feature. So it says, app privacy report records data and sensor access, app and website network activity, and the most frequently contacted domains. So basically what this is going to do is let you know when applications are accessing your photos, your camera, your microphone, anything. So you can see right here, we have data and sensor access. So this is going to show us when an application uses like our media library, our location, our contacts, our photos, it's gonna show all of that right here. So there's really no hiding now with applications in the app store because Apple and, and this new feature is going to let the user know anytime an application is accessing certain things. So if we go down here, you can see app network activity as well. So you can see Amazon's number one. If we tap on that, you can see all of the domains that were contacted by that application. You can really go in depth right here and see the exact time and date as well. And if we go back, you can see we have website network activity as well. So it shows these websites contacted domains when you visited them within the app in the past seven days. So you can see there it shows that. And then most contacted domains are right here as well. And then we have the kill switch to turn off app privacy report. However, I would not recommend anybody turn this off. I think every single user should have this turned on because there's really no downside. I mean, and it gives you a lot of information as to what apps are using what on your phone. So this is a really awesome feature. I can't wait to see if Apple adds anything more to this because this is the first beta, but this is something we've been waiting on for a very long time. And I'm happy to see that it is finally here. Now, another pretty big change in iOS 15.2 is inside of the emergency SOS section right here. So if we go into emergency SOS, we will see quite a few changes here. So we have a lot of verbiage changes and then also some fundamental changes to how emergency SOS works. So you can see we have some verbiage changes right underneath the animation up top. It says press and hold the side button and either volume button to make an emergency call. And then right here, it used to say call with side button and that has now changed in iOS 15.2 to say call with five presses so just a minor verbiage change and then right above where it used to say call with side button we now have call with hold and that is a new function here in 15.2 that allows you to contact emergency services with a simple hold so it says if you press and hold the side and volume button so if you hold all three at the same time that is also a new way to activate emergency sos and then also instead of a five second countdown we now have an eight second countdown 
for emergency SOS. So if you activate this feature, you're now gonna have an eight second countdown instead of a five second countdown. But those are some new changes to the emergency SOS feature, which still to this day, I feel like it's one of the most underrated features in iOS. Now I know some people have also been complaining about the 60 Hertz animations on the 13 Pro devices. However, I've not been facing that issue, so I cannot confirm if that has been fixed or not. So some people in both first party and third party applications were reporting that they were getting the 60 Hertz you know, animations instead of the 120 Hertz that they should be seeing on the Pro model. So I don't know if that's been fixed. You guys can test that and let me know down in a comment below. And then also a lot of people were asking about new emoji. I've not seen any new emoji in this update. Those will probably come either in a later beta or in iOS 15.3. And then it's also the same for wallpapers. So no new wallpapers. Those might come as well in a later 15.2 beta release or in iOS 15.3. And it's the same deal with the CSAM detection. So this was very controversial a couple of months ago where Apple introduced CSAM detection, but we have not seen that implemented yet into iOS 15. And we don't know when we are going to be seeing that because Apple said it was being delayed indefinitely. And then as far as the AirPods 3 go, it does look like we got a fix for the glyph icon. So if you guys watched my unboxing video, you would see that the wrong glyph showed up sometimes inside of the control center here, but it has been fixed. So if I pull out this AirPod and put it in my phone, you can see the glyph has been fixed. It shows the proper AirPods 3 now in the volume slider. But as far as anything else, I'm not really seeing anything else new here in iOS 15.2 beta one. So it's looking like it's going to be mainly just to introduce that new app privacy report and the new emergency SOS features. So there are gonna be some bug fixes as well. So if we take a look at the release notes right here, you will see some bug fixes. So if we go down to the app store, there are a few resolved issues, mainly to do with the pay as you go offers and the subscription renewal rates. So really minor things. And then also down here under Swift UI, there are some resolved issues there as well. And then there's only one known issue in the release notes and it says document based apps include a save as menu above duplicate. So that's just a very minor bug. So really wouldn't expect too many things to be wrong here in 15.2 beta one. It seems like 15.1 really patched up a lot of issues, even ones that were not mentioned in the release notes. So that is good to see. And I would expect 15.2 beta one to also patch up some additional bugs that are not mentioned anywhere. And of course, as we go on throughout the betas, I'm sure we will see a lot of resolved issues. Now, one that is pretty popular, of course, is the storage bug. So that did not come back for me. That was actually fixed in 15.1 for me, but 15.2 might fix it for some people. If you are still showing the wrong, you know, information up there that could be resolved in 15.2 beta one, you have to let me know down in the comment below because mine is showing normally now after updating to 15.1. Now, one bug I did have after my initial install 15.2 beta one was this really weird bug with the suggestions right here, the Siri suggestions widget. So it shows my music really small up there in the top left and also the text is gray. So that was a pretty weird bug. First time I've seen that. So I'm assuming that will be fixed in the second beta or it could have just been an anomaly after a fresh install. We'll have to wait and see if that comes back or not. But as far as any blank widgets, I did not have that. That was the only issue I had with widgets or really overall, that's really the only bug I've seen so far. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels about the same as 15.1 to me. Of course, I've not had a ton of time to use this. That is what my follow-up videos on the weekend on Saturdays are for. That's when I cover the battery life and performance more in depth. But so far, my initial impressions are that it feels the same as 15.1. And when I ran a Geekbench test, you can see I scored pretty similar to 15.1 as well. So we got a 1745 on the single core and a 4837 on the multi-core. And if we compare that to 15.1, you can see we got a 1743 and a 4869 on that. So slightly higher on the single core and slightly lower on the multi-core. And as far as battery life goes, battery life I would also expect to stay about the same as 15.1. I would not expect a big increase or decrease coming from 15.1 or iOS 15. You know, it may be better than iOS 15, but definitely probably not gonna be a lot better than 15.1 unless you were having battery drain issues that could be resolved. But I will let you guys know in my follow-up video on Saturday if that battery life sustains and it stays good or if it stays bad 
for me. And of course, I will be posting a poll as well to let you guys chime in and let me know how the battery life is running for you. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So we are on 15.2 beta one that released today on the 27th, a Wednesday. So it's going to depend on if Apple is on a one week or a two week cycle. I would expect it to be one week, though. I would expect to see a new beta every single week. So I would expect to see iOS 15.2 beta two on the third so november 3rd of course it could come any day that week apple is very you know sporadic with their beta releases but if i had to guess it would be either tuesday or wednesday the second or the third of november and if that is the case we should have a few betas and then see a final release near the end of november or the beginning of december but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 15.2 beta 1 it does bring a pretty massive feature with the app privacy report right here then we do also have that pretty big change as well with emergency SOS. So if you guys found anything else new in this update, let me know down in a comment below. And of course I will be covering more about 15.2 in my follow-up this Saturday. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 and 15.2 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.